Imagine this. You're handed a tiny square, just two numbers on it. Seems simple, right? But this little code holds big secrets. It tells you how heavy an atom is, how it behaves, and what element it is in the first place. This square is called an element tile, and reading it is like unlocking an atom's ID card. But here's the twist. Some atoms have secret versions called isotopes, and that's where atomic path really begins. So let's crack the code together. We'll learn how to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons hiding inside each atom. Let's take a closer look at the element tile for chlorine. You'll see two important numbers, and they tell us a lot about the atom. The number at the top, 17, is the atomic number. This tells us chlorine has 17 protons. That's what makes it chlorine. No other element has exactly 17. And here's a key point. In a neutral atom, the number of electrons is also 17. Now, the number at the bottom, 35.45, is the atomic mass. It's the average mass of all the naturally occurring forms of chlorine called isotopes. And because it's an average, it's almost always a decimal, not a whole number. So why isn't the mass a nice round number? It's because not all chlorine atoms are exactly the same. Some have more neutrons than others and those versions are called isotopes. Most chlorine atoms you'll find in nature are either chlorine-35 or chlorine-37. Both of them have 17 protons because that's what makes them chlorine in the first place. But here's the difference. Chlorine-35 has 18 neutrons and chlorine-37 has 20. These are isotopes, atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Now that we know about isotopes, let's talk about something called the mass number. The total number of protons plus neutrons give us the mass number of each isotope. So chlorine-35 has a mass number of 35 and chlorine-37 has a mass number of 37. Let's clear this up. Atomic mass and mass number are not the same, but they are closely related. The atomic mass is the average mass of all the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. Since it's an average, it usually comes out as a decimal. The mass number, on the other hand, is the total number of protons and neutrons in a single atom. It's always a whole number because you can't have half a proton or neutron. Here's a helpful tip. If you round the atomic mass to the nearest whole number, you'll often get the mass number of the most common isotope. Since chlorine's atomic mass is around 35.5, and that's closer to 35 than 37, it means chlorine-35 is more abundant in nature. So think of it this way. Atomic mass is like the class average, while mass number is the score of one specific student, one isotope. Here's how isotopes are often written, using a special shorthand format called nuclear notation. You'll see something like this, X, A, Z. Here, X is the element symbol, a quick way to identify the element. Z is the atomic number, which tells us how many protons the atom has. And A is the mass number, the total number of protons and neutrons in that atom. Now let's apply this to chlorine. We replace X with Cl, the symbol for chlorine. Since chlorine always has 17 protons, we replace Z with 17, its atomic number. And for the isotope chlorine-35, the mass number is 35, so we replace A with 35. This is how we write the isotope chlorine-35. The mass number goes at the top, 35, and the atomic number goes at the bottom, 17. This tells us everything we need. It's a chlorine atom with 17 protons and a total mass number of 35, which means it has 18 neutrons. Let's look at real-life example cobalt-60. This isotope of cobalt is used in medicine to target and destroy cancer cells, almost like a precision tool doctors can aim from outside the body. 
In nuclear notation, we write it as cobalt-60, where cobalt is the element Z equals 27 and A equals 60. And here's a tip. The larger value is always the mass number. Let's break this isotope down further by looking at its subatomic particles. We start with protons. Cobalt's atomic number is 27, so it has 27 protons. To find neutrons, subtract the atomic number from the mass number. 16 minus 27 gives us 33 neutrons. And since it's a neutral atom, it also has 27 electrons. Now let's look at the different format, the full elemental you'd see on the periodic table. Here's the element aluminum, and we'll use it to fill out our particle table again. But this time, we're starting with a tile, not isotope notation. On the tile, you might also see extra details like atomic mass, oxidation states, electronegativity, and electron configuration depending on the table. First, the atomic number is 13, so aluminum has 13 protons. And since this is a neutral atom, it also has 13 electrons. Now look at the atomic mass, it says 26.98. But we can't have a decimal number of protons or neutrons, so we round it to the nearest whole number. To find the number of neutrons, subtract the atomic number from the rounded mass number. That's 27 less 13, which gives us 14 neutrons. Alright, your turn. Let's use everything we've learned to break down this atom. We're looking at the element mercury with the symbol Hg. You've got a blank table, its symbol, mass number, and atomic number. Grab your periodic table, you'll need it. Looking it up, mercury has an atomic number of 80. That means it has 80 protons, and since it's neutral, it also has 80 electrons. Mercury's atomic mass is around 200.59, so we round it to 201 to get the mass number. Now subtract. 201 minus 80 gives us 121 neutrons. Not bad, right? You've just decoded mercury without breaking a sweat. Let's try a real-world example, the kind scientists actually use. Here's the question. A certain isotope of carbon used to date the age of ancient fossils has 8 neutrons. What is the isotope? Let's break it down using what we know. We're told it has 8 neutrons. And since it's carbon, we know it must have 6 protons. That's what makes it carbon in the first place. It's neutral, so that means it also has 6 electrons. Now we add protons and neutrons together to find the mass number. 6 plus 8 equals 14. That's the mass number. So this isotope is called carbon-14, and this style of naming is called the hyphen notation. And in nuclear notation, we can also write it like this, carbon-14, just the mass number and the element symbol. Notice how the atomic number, the 6, isn't shown here. That's totally fine because we already know from the periodic table that carbon always has 6 protons. Let's try one more. You're told that a neutral atom has a total of 12 electrons. From that single clue, what can we figure out? For letter A, what is the element's atomic number? Since it's neutral, the number of electrons equals protons. That means Z equals 12. For letter B, what's the name of the element with atomic number 12? Check the periodic table. Element 12 is magnesium. For letter Z, if this atom has 12 neutrons, what's its mass number? Just add the protons and neutrons. 12 protons plus 12 neutrons equals to the mass number of 24. Now let's write its full nuclear symbol notation, the XAZ format, that gives us magnesium 24. Nice work! One clue and you uncovered the whole identity of the atom. So let's bring it all together. The atomic number tells us the number of protons and that's what defines the element. The atomic mass is the average mass of all the naturally occurring isotopes. Remember, isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons. And the mass number? 
That's just protons plus neutrons, simple and whole. And that's it. You've just wrapped up a huge part of the chemistry journey. From element tiles to isotopes, you've learned how to read the tiniest details in an atom. And that's no small thing. But don't hang up just yet. There's a whole new world waiting to be explored. We're heading from atoms to something a little bigger. See you in the next lesson, and yes, it's going to be a yay moment right here on Learning with G.